Hello, everyone. Production or assembly lines are the facility layout used in industries with high production volume and low product variety. The main advantage of a product layout is its capacity to break down necessary work into a sequence of basic tasks that can be efficiently and regularly executed by either low-skilled laborers or specialized machinery. Line balancing is used to decide how to assign tasks to workstations. Line balancing aims to group tasks such that these groups have approximately equal time requirements so that the idle time along the production time is minimized consequently the labor and equipment utilization is maximized. One of the concepts related to line balance is cycle time defined as the maximum time allowed at each workstation to complete its tasks on a unit. The output rate of the production time is found on the cycle time. For example, if the cycle time is 3 minutes, products will come off the end of the line at the rate of 1 unit every 3 minutes, where the output rate can be simply calculated by dividing the operating time per day by the cycle time. Examining the following straightforward example enables you to gain insights into task groupings and cycle time. Assume that the fabrication of a specific product can be broken down into five fundamental tasks, with the associated task times and precedence relationships illustrated in the shown diagram. From this diagram, we can find the range of possible cycle times as it is governed by the task time. The minimum cycle time is equal to the longest task time, which is, in this example, one minute while the maximum cycle time is equal to the sum of the task times, which is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7 plus 1 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2 is equal to 2.5 minutes. The minimum cycle time applies when there are five workstations, while the maximum cycle time applies when all tasks are performed at a single workstation. These cycle times are crucial as they define the potential output range for the production line, which can be calculated using the shown formula. The output rate equals the operating time per day divided by the cycle time. Assume that the line will operate for 8 hours per day. With a cycle time of 1 minute, the output would be 8 multiplied by 60. To convert hours to minutes, divided by 1 is equal to 480 units per day. With a cycle time of 2.5 minutes, the output would be 8 multiplied by 60 divided by 2.5 is equal to 192 units per day. Assuming that only one production line is deployed, the output selected for the line must be between 192 units per day and 480 units per day. Generally, the cycle time is determined by the desired output rate. First, a desired output rate is selected, then the cycle time is calculated. If the resulting cycle time does not fall within the minimum and maximum limits, the desired output rate must be adjusted. The cycle time can be calculated using the following equation. The cycle time equals the operating time per day divided by the desired output rate. For instance, let's assume the desired output rate is 480 units and the line operates 480 minutes per day. So, the necessary cycle time equals 480 divided by 480 is equal to 1 minute. To assign tasks or activities to workstations, we have to find the number of stations which is a function of both the desired output rate and our ability to combine elemental tasks into workstations. Theoretically, the minimum number of stations necessary to provide a specified rate of output can be calculated using this equation. N minimum equals sigma t divided by the cycle time, where N minimum is the theoretical minimum number of stations and sigma t is the sum of task times. Suppose the desired output rate is a maximum of 480 units per day. This will require a cycle time of one minute. The minimum number of stations required to achieve this goal is N minimum equals 2.5 minutes divided by 1 minute equals 2.5 stations. Because 2.5 stations are not feasible, it is necessary to round up to 3 stations, because 2.5 is the minimum. Thus, the number of stations used will equal or exceed 3, depending on how successfully the tasks can be grouped into workstations. The precedence diagram is a handy tool for line balancing. It shows the tasks to be done and the order they must be performed. The diagram is read from left to right, with the starting tasks on the left and the final task on the right. For example, the shown diagram illustrates that task B can only start after task A is finished, and task D can only start after both tasks B and C are completed. The tasks in this diagram are the same ones we've been using. Let's look at how a line is balanced by assigning tasks to workstations. There are no guaranteed methods to find the perfect assignments so managers use heuristic or intuitive rules to find good and sometimes optimal solutions. Here are two common line balancing heuristics used for illustration. The first is to assign tasks in order of most following tasks. 
while the second is to assign tasks in order of greatest positional weight. Positional weight is the sum of each task's time and the times of all following tasks. Arrange these tasks into three workstations. Use a cycle time of one minute. Assign tasks in order of the greatest number of followers. The first step is to begin with task A, because it has the most following tasks, three tasks, B, D, and E. So, task A is assigned to workstation 1. Next, tasks B and C each have two following tasks. Task B has a duration of one minute. So, if it is added to task A in workstation 1, its total time will be 0.1 plus 1 is equal to 1.1 minutes which exceeds the cycle time. Consequently, assigning task B to workstation 1 is not feasible. For task C, if it is added to task A in workstation 1, its total time will be 0.1 plus 0.7 is equal to 0.8 minutes which is less than the cycle time. Consequently, task C will fit in the time remaining at workstation 1 so assign task C to workstation 1. Task B now has the most followers, but it will not fit at workstation 1, so assign it to workstation 2. There is no time left at workstation 2 as task B's duration equals the cycle time, so we move on to workstation 3, assigning task D and task E to that workstation. This example has been intentionally simplified to demonstrate the basic procedure. Future examples will cover tie-breaking, constructing precedence diagrams, and the positional weight method. So, keep following us, stay tuned, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. Thanks for watching. Your feedback is appreciated so, please comment on this video. And, if you like it press like and share it. See you again.